I was hoping that you would make like an awesome like introduction for me and like everybody would clap and stuff, but like <laughs> No, uh I am my name is Bergsred, but I'm called Baggy. That's a, a bit simpler for you. But I'm a PhD student in, in positive organizational psychology. And basically for the past recent years, I've been helping to develop individuals and leaders and create high performing teams in all across all sectors and also develop positive cultures. I've written books, had podcasts, was a professional soccer player. And yeah, this is me, as you can see. A few years ago, I was sitting at a coffee house in Iceland and I, for the past years, for the past 12 years, the only purpose and meaning in my life was being a professional soccer player. And I just want to play outside of Iceland, playing professionally. But at this moment, um, I, and I didn't think about anything else than soccer, just like soccer was my only thing. At this moment, I realized I had this kind of aha moment where I realized that for, for the past one year, I didn't have meaning and purpose in soccer anymore. And it was quite hard. And I, I felt it. And I didn't have this kind of passion and purpose that I had in, in soccer. But my meaning and purpose in life didn't diminish because I had started studying positive psychology and coaching psychology at the University of East London. And my passion and purpose just went at helping people in psychology in general. So I got this amazing epiphany. I was just going to figure out what constitutes a meaningful life. And then I was going to teach everybody how to do it in two weeks. After three days, I was like on my like third hour trying to figure that out. I was like, holy moly, this is going to be my life's work. Then I started to coach people in terms of meaning. I started, um, I started a podcast, as I said, writing books about the topic and, and, and one thing and, and doing studies about it. And one thing, you know, if you're studying something, it probably relates to something you're interested in, if you're, if you're conscious about it or unconscious about it. So we are normally, uh, many people are studying themselves <laughs> in a sense. So that resulted me in studying uh, this paper called A Meaning in Life Intervention. How setting personal goals and reviewing life story increases positive effect. And the problem, problems I was identifying is that presence of meaning in life, if you experience meaning in life, you're healthier, live longer, and you have increased, increased well-being. A lack of meaning in life is associated with anxiety, depression, and a risk, increased risk of suicide attempts. So that kind of, I, I never heard about meaning in life. Like, what is it? So I became so interested in this important phenomena and to help to, to figure out ways to help people how to experience more meaning in their life. The problem two, which relates more to the literature on meaning in life, is that mainly studies had assessed people in the clinical population how to restore meaning after a traumatic event, which is indeed important, but no study has, had helped people within the normal population to experience meaning in life as a, as a prevention for mental health difficulties and to promote flourishing. And I came, became really interested in that because I think that could scale to a, a lot of like greater amount of people. So what is meaning in life? Uh, the kind of scientific consensus in, in de defining meaning in life is that it has three components. Coherence, which is often called the cognitive part of meaning, and that's understanding yourself, your experiences, and making sense of the world and your role in the world. Second part is purpose, having an aspiring aim or direction in life, and that's often called the motivational component of meaning. Lastly, significance is perceiving that life 
is worthwhile and malleable. And based on these components, I adjusted my study. So my main objective of the study was to develop and test a meaning in life intervention, an online meaning in life intervention. So a little bit about the structure. I gathered people with a convenience sample through my social media. I had developed like a social media platform on Instagram and Facebook throughout five years or something. And I was like, yes, finally, finally, I'm, rewarded, I'm getting rewarded for putting all of the effort in the, in the media. And my, my friends laughed uh, about my, my goals with the study because it took like one to two hours to participate. So, and it's hard to get people to participate in your study. But I said, wait and see, wait and see. So it was around 200 people in Iceland, and it was a randomized control trials. So they were randomized into three experimental groups, which I'm gonna tell you more about now. The first group was, first experimental group was assigned to a meaningful, meaning, mo motivational meaning intervention. And what they were assigned to do was to imagine their lives three to five years down the road, uh, emphasizing on social dimensions of life, such as relationships, professional domains, such as school or work, and personal, such as health and leisure time. When they thought about it for 50 minutes and wrote about it for 50 minutes, they were supposed to set four goals, four clear goals based on what you wrote in the, in the first step. And through each of these goals, they went for four, through four steps. The first step was to answer why is this goal important? Second step was to answer how we're gonna make this goal a reality. Third step was to identify obstacles and how we're gonna bring a solution to those obstacles. And lastly, the, the last part was uh, when are you going to reach that goal? So that was the first experimental group. The second experimental group did exactly the same, but I added another thing, which was that to emphasize on the coherence component, so you understand yourself, I added the life story review. So I asked people to write about what is your life story to someone who has never heard the story of your life. So they're supposed to write the story from the, the day they remembered and to the day how they became the person they are today, basically. And I encourage them to reflect on key moments in their life journey, like low, low points, high points, and turning points, because those can greatly influence our life. And lastly, the control group, they uh, wrote about their past day for 24 hours, not for 24 hours, but for, for last 24 hours, and, and about two activities in greater detail. So the process was answering, first they answered some questionnaires about meaning in life, psychological well-being, subjective well-being, happiness, and positive effect, or positive emotions and negative emotions. Then they engaged in the randomized intervention, which was the motivational, the cognitive motiv motiv motivational, or the active, control group. And then they answered the questionnaires again. And my goal was to see if there was a significant difference between the people who answered the scale at time one and time two. The only significant results I got and meaningful result was that the intervention increased cost effect, which basically the, there was a significant interaction between um, between time and positive effect. So positive emotions such as being alert, enthusiastic, motivated, passionate, etc., that significantly increased from prior to post-intervention. And also post-intervention, there was a difference between the experimental groups and the active control group. And that relates much to all of the messages I got from social media because I got like 50 messages from people thanking me for inviting them to participate in my research. And I was like, what is going on? But actually Dara supported the messages I was getting on Instagram, which was kind of interesting from my from intellectual perspective. 
And the effect size of this interaction effect was 23. And effect size basically tells us how meaningful our res results are. And some criticize positive psychology in general for being like small effect size. But it's, it isn't like you go to the gym once and you stay fit. It's like you have to keep doing the things. So I just want to briefly mention that. What's the conclusion? A uh, briefly administered uh, intervention that helped people set personal goal setting and reviewing one's life story increases positive effect in the current sample. So you can utilize this low cost intervention to increase a positive emotion that can put you on a trajectory for a positive emotion which widens your behavior and your thinking and improves yourself psychologically, socially, and personally. Recommendations. Firstly, give yourself time of doing a goal setting and reviewing your own life story. Some people like cringe when they hear these kind of self-development things, but like, firstly, it's quite beneficial in terms of like the literature on those things. It's quite beneficial to your life. And also, it can be quite fun. It's fun to imagine the future and writing about the future and, and, and seeing where you want to go and why. And also fun to get to know yourself through your own life story. And you don't really know anyone until you know their life story. So that was the first recommendation of the results. Second one is more overall. I think that we should aim for a meaningful life. Not exactly a happy one, because happiness comes and goes. I think happiness can be a byproduct of living a meaningful life, by having a purpose, by understanding yourself, by perceiving that life is worthwhile and valuable. And let's be honest, life is difficult. Life is so hard, and you need something to pursue and go through th those difficulties. That's meaning. That's meaning in life. That's going to sustain you through difficulties. Here's my paper, if somebody wants to read it um, following this lecture. And all of my social media and email if you want to have like, um, how, if you want me to send you the intervention or if you have any questions. So thank you for your attention. And, and, and I want to end up with, you are so smart. You've got such a bright future for you. I was like, you should be here talking. I should be listening to you more. Like, so. Each and every one of you, I uh, just want to thank you and, and thank you for your time and attention. Absolutely. So, firstly, we can never really control what happens in life. But at the end, I believe that we can control what meaning we make out of what happens. And I think that can be a positive meaning or a negative meaning. And the best thing is that there are some facts about your life story, in a sense, if you're just talking about that. But you are also the owner of your story. So I know that life is hard and, and, and when things happen that like makes you like have no coherence about yourself or the world. But then you have to reflect what meaning am I taking from this positive, negative or turning point event? And how can I use that meaning to help me in the future to develop even more meaningful life and become stronger and stuff? Because there's a literature on, on post-traumatic growth and actually people who where the meaning gets destroyed in a sense, they can actually become, recognize some strengths they had, have a, another perspective on life, experience more gratitude, and the worldview changes. So 
I hope that I answered your questions question well enough. Yes. Hmm. So, both with, you can address meaning on like different levels. So you can address it from a leadership level, organizational level, and individual level. So let's say I'm working with a company. Then, and many of companies only try to motivate their employees by like, this is how money we're making, and like, this is how, how much money we want to make. But actually, what is driving that money is purpose. And often people, organization that I have worked with haven't communicated that person on a scalable level to people that unites people and makes them more motivated and more happy at work. Then on the leadership level, by pointing out how the individuals in your team at work, or if you're having a sport team, how each unique role plays a vital uh, role in receiving and, and fulfilling that purpose or vision or meaning. Finally, you have to think individually, how, how, do you, how can you craft your job in a way that helps you make it more meaningful? For instance, if you are doing a job where your, your personality and values don't fit with the personality and values of the culture, you've got, you're not going to experience like, a lot of meaningful work. Also, if you're not doing tasks that you're using your strengths to contribute to the world, you are not really experiencing meaningful work. So thinking, you can think about it from an, like an organizational overarching level, a leadership level, how can you help the followers experience more meaning, and also from the individual perspective, how you can craft your own meaning in a sense. Do you have questions? <laughs> I can answer anything. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.